find the ring, and put it round, 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 and with ties so strong. You are listening to Catholic Family Podcast. Greetings, fellow travelers through the liturgical year. This is Lisa Davis with another feast day quick take on the feast of St. Catherine of Siena. We have what we might call ordinary and extraordinary saints that make up the ranks of the church triumphant. The ordinary ones are the ones we can identify with, the ones that seem to share our plight on earth, yet rise above it in holy but earthbound ways. These are the wonderful, somehow comforting saints, not necessarily known for their miracles on earth, saints like St. Maria Goretti, St. Francis de Sales, and St. Therese of Lisieux. Then there are the extraordinary saints, ones that rise above the earthly in magnificent ways. Their examples go beyond ordinary piety to raise our minds to heaven. We see the power of God through them. These are the amazing saints known for their wonders and miracles, saints like St. Joseph of Cupertino, St. Martin de Porres, and today's patron, St. Catherine of Siena. One of the greatest and most unique souls celebrated by the Church, St. Catherine, the 24th child of Lapa and Jacopa di Benincasa, was born in Siena in 1347. And I should pause here. I sense all the raised eyebrows out there. Yes, I said 24 children, though they all didn't survive childhood, including St. Catherine's twin. And then her mother went on to have one more girl, bringing the family total to 25 in all. Talk about a blessed family. Consider that the Benincasa saint wasn't born until the very end of their reproductive life. There's a lesson there, I think, in choosing God's will over our own and family size. But back to Benincasa number 24. From youngest childhood, St. Catherine inclined to piety and never felt called to the married life. But in humility, she rejected the formally religious state as well, choosing to sanctify the single life by becoming a third order Dominican. Though barely educated, by divine providence she became a writer of superb merit, a mystic, a stigmatist, a civil and religious reformer of worldwide influence, the conscience and counselor of popes. It was she who ended the Avignon papacies, also known as the Babylonian captivity of the church, and though she died before its resolution, she worked tirelessly, writing hundreds of letters to end the great western schism. She became renowned for wonders and miracles during her life, and was an incorruptible after her death. The unlikely story of a poor, illiterate girl of the working class who grew up to inspire and guide the leaders of the 14th century is the stuff of legends. But the thing I always remember about St. Catherine of Siena is the ring. St. Catherine, along with being one of the few saints in history to be distinguished by the stigmata, is also a saint most highly favored in her unique mystical espousal to our Lord, a particular gift to her, as she never became a nun, but like sisters who profess perpetual vows, when our Lord accepted her as his spiritual bride, he gave her a beautiful ring. Blessed Raymond of Capua, her confessor, documented that on the day of the espousal, St. Catherine was alone in her room at the home of her parents, opting out of the pre-Lenten celebration and seeking through prayer and fasting, quote, the face of her eternal bridegroom. Our Lord appeared and said, and I quote again, Since for love of me you have forsaken vanities and despised the pleasures of the flesh and fastened all of the delights of your heart upon me, now when the rest of the household are feasting and enjoying themselves, I have determined to celebrate the wedding feast of your soul and to espouse you to me in faith as I promised. Her confessor goes on to describe what Catherine later revealed to him. Quote, when he had finished speaking, his most glorious virgin mother appeared with the most blessed St. John the Evangelist, the glorious Apostle Paul, St. Dominic, the founder of the order, and the prophet David with his harp. While David played sweet strains on the harp, the mother of God took Catherine's hand in her own most holy hand, and presenting her to her son, courteously asked him to marry her to himself in faith. The Son of God, graciously agreeing, held out a gold ring with four pearls set in a circle and a wonderful diamond in the middle, and with his most holy right hand 
he slipped it onto the virgin's second finger, saying, There, I marry you to me in faith, to me, your Creator and Savior. Keep this faith unspotted until you come to me in heaven and celebrate the marriage that has no end. Imagine being given away by the Blessed Mother, while St. David plays the harp, and St. Dominic and St. John look on. Picture Our Lady holding St. Catherine's hand as Our Lord gently slips the ring on St. Catherine's finger. This scene, a favorite subject for countless artists, is unbelievably beautiful and miraculous to imagine, but most touching to me and most memorable, maybe because I'm just a visual person and, and I'm a girl, is St. Catherine's memento of the event, her wedding ring. Blessed Raymond tells us that though the ring, like the stigmata, was invisible to everyone else, St. Catherine could always see it. What a gift to have been blessed with such a personal reminder of Christ's love for her. We see how much value our Lord placed in the complete sacrifice St. Catherine made of her soul to him, but we also get to see his understanding and sympathy for our earthly sensibilities. Christ didn't need to give St. Catherine a ring. She would have appreciated and understood their espousal without it. But Christ understands our human hearts. He knows how to touch us, and he knows how important visual symbols are for us. And a woman who has just been married really needs a wedding ring. The church in its wisdom, God's wisdom, has always understood the power of symbols, wrapping the faithful in sight, sounds, and even smells full of meaning and beauty. Think of the smell of incense or Easter lilies, how the color purple on the altar turns the mind immediately to thoughts penitential, and white we know means purity and joy, a feast of our Lord or Our Lady coming up. Think of any sacrament, and you can come up with an image to go with it. Baptism is water. Confirmation and holy orders are oil. In Holy Communion, we begin with bread and wine, and in the sacrament of matrimony, there's the ring. There's a lot of symbolism in wedding rings. Historically, they've more often been gold than silver because gold is a precious metal, valued for its purity, and not just in the secular world, but in the symbolism of the church. Did you know that the cup of all chalices used in Holy Mass may be made of either gold or silver, but that the interior of the cup must be gold? Gold has for centuries been associated with gravity and sanctity, but in a practical way, it's also a symbol of wealth. A golden wedding ring was the promise of a new son-in-law to a loving father that he had the means to provide for his new wife. Another important symbol of a ring is its shape, a circle which is the universal symbol for eternity. The marriage vows until death, the perpetual vows of a religious sister are literally for eternity. A wedding ring came to be worn on the third finger of the left hand to recognize the vena amori, or vein of love, which was traditionally believed to have a direct path from the third finger to the heart, thus signifying a connection between life and love. Another old tradition connects the third finger with the Blessed Trinity. In medieval England, the bridegroom would slip the ring on each finger during the wedding ceremony, saying, in the name of the Father, on the index finger, the Son on the middle finger, and the Holy Ghost landing on the ring finger. I think any faithful woman would agree that her wedding ring completes a circuit between herself, her husband, and God, a circle that passes through her heart. Christ understood the human importance of the symbol when he slipped the ring on St. Catherine's finger. He knew its value to her, and it was important to him too because he loved St. Catherine as he has a particular love for all the virgins who make perpetual vows to him in the religious vocation. You may have seen the recent interview Kevin did with his sister sisters, our two daughters who recently took steps in the congregation of the Mother of God. Our youngest daughter, Sister Evangeline Marie, professed her very first vows, and Sister Maria Antonia, who has been in the congregation for six years, professed her final or perpetual vows. Like the sacrament of marriage, she made a promise to be forever true to her spouse, Jesus, and is waiting joyfully until the day she meets him. I loved what she said about that. In marriage, you say, until death do us part, but sisters say, until death will we meet. 
The nature of the relationship is deep and spiritual, but no less real and permanent than between a mortal husband and his wife. As St. Catherine knew, it was even more permanent in that there is not a parting at death, but a long-awaited joining. It's the most natural and obvious thing in the world that sisters receive wedding rings, solid or mystical like St. Catherine's. It's a symbol of love and commitment. Thirty-five years ago Monday, my husband slipped my wedding ring on my finger and pledged his fidelity in the sacrament of matrimony. I look at this ring now and remember not only the love, me for my husband, him for me, and God's love for us both, but the proof of love, the faithfulness through the years, the sacrifice, the patience and forgiveness that my husband and I have sometimes struggled with, but that our Heavenly Father has thrown down in buckets, sometimes when we least deserved it. But it's all right there. We could never persevere in our married vocation without His help. My wedding ring is not mystical in itself, but its meaning is. My calling is not as extraordinary as St. Catherine's, but in the great scheme of things, it's just as vital. And though I've not come remotely close to perfecting my love for Christ as St. Catherine did, He loves me just as He loves her, and His plan for me, which is true for all spouses, is all in this ring on my finger. In my station, it symbolizes the unity in marriage and commitment to the duties of wife and mother, and it's all wound up with saving souls, maybe on a small scale compared to St. Catherine, whose life affected millions over the course of time, but it's of eternal importance just the same. The Blessed Mother told the children at Fatima that the final battle between Christ and Satan would be over marriage and the family. The spiritual success or failure of each individual marriage, each individual family, makes ripples in the spiritual universe. We can each make a difference by perfecting ourselves and our stations in life. St. Catherine said, Be who God meant you to be, and you will set the world on fire. God's call to most of us is not as extraordinary as St. Catherine's, but His call to holiness is universal. By prayer and sacrifice, by raising a prayerful family, we can cooperate with the saints in bringing about the big and extraordinary feats necessary in our time, to bring the world in union with the faith, to restore and reform the sanctity of the magisterium, and especially the papacy, which was the great work of St. Catherine's life, and all of it for the love of God. St. Catherine died in 1380 at the age of 33, after a long illness. The marks of the stigmata that she had prayed remain hidden from the world became visible after her death. A raised mark on the second finger of her left hand could be seen, but the ring remained invisible. I have no doubt she wears it in heaven. I have a feeling that all who sacrifice to honor the true and godly commitment of their vows get to wear their rings in heaven. St. Catherine, patroness of Europe, and of those who are ridiculed for their piety, pray for us. You've been listening to the Catholic Family Podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please share it with your friends and family. You can support the production on Patreon and PayPal, and you can reach Kevin at kevin89davis at gmail.com. Ad maiorem de gloriam. All for the greater glory of God.